Do we regret leaving the U.S. two years ago? Short answer? Well, there really is no short answer. We didn't take into account how our relationships would be impacted. We thought we knew how our finances would be impacted. But what about other things that we had to sacrifice that we hadn't even thought about? So do we regret it? We have to go back to the beginning to answer that question. The philosophical why is something that we all have to address when considering our motives for doing something. This idea of why is something that I'll ask you to hold on to as it's an important concept as we go along here and it'll hopefully help you in your quest to make the right decision for you and your family, whether you've already left the U.S. and you're adapting to a new country or you're just in the planning stage. Kaylee and I have been living abroad off and on since 2009 and as recently as 2019, we found ourselves back in the United States of America in what was a life-changing period of life. You see, what happened was we left our well-paying jobs in sunny and sweaty Singapore and we took a bet on ourselves. We had the deep desire to become more job independent and financially independent. I got a digital job allowing me to work remotely from home and that gave us enough money to allow Josh the time to pursue building a business and working on our real estate investments. Little did we know that within the months of telling our employer in Singapore that we would not be returning, we found out that Kaylee was pregnant. While this was an immense blessing, it also threw a serious wrench in the works. You see, in Singapore, we had really amazing insurance provided by our employer. We could have basically given birth in Singapore for free and had state-of-the-art care on top of that. Contrast that with the U.S., where we weren't sure what our healthcare coverage looked like exactly, although we did know that we should be all right in terms of quality of care because we would be near one of the nation's top women's and children's hospitals. Those kinds of unknowns with healthcare costs and quality can be scary. The alternative was moving somewhere else right away and skipping the U.S. but figuring out the system in my third trimester, which was not an ideal option. So that was a concern, but very quickly we realized that the income from Kaylee's job alone probably wasn't going to be enough for a family of three now. I decided to try to find a job. Luckily, I found one. Best of all, it was a remote job that I too could do from home. In early 2020, we introduced our daughter Valencia to the world and she immediately became the center of our world for the next several months, and right now still too. Two weeks later, we took the picture and paid for an expedited passport in preparation for a residence visa application and our next move. We wanted to get her to her two-month checkup and then head abroad again. There was only one problem. That was March of 2020, when the whole world shut down and the U.S. political and social tensions heated up. By April 2020, even though my job was in the healthcare realm, there were whispers of layoffs as projects that my company was doing would have funding pulled and would be given internally as healthcare professionals weren't able to do their regular roles due to shifting demands within the hospitals themselves. Things got very financially unstable for us at the time. We did have the support of family that we could stay with during that time to keep our properties rented and our budget lean, but we did feel pretty vulnerable and dependent due to the high cost of living in the U.S. And then it really hit. We had endured so much national pain through the riots that followed the death of George Floyd. We personally experienced Louisville, Kentucky not long after the death of Breonna Taylor and what happened in that city with the riots that ensued. We felt the uncertainty trying to drive across the Florida Georgia line just to get back in the state after there was indecision on how the government was going to handle the COVID transmission. 2020 was very much a year to remember for us and, in a way, a year very much to forget. As soon as the EU decided to allow travel again, Kaylee and I were very well on our way to applying for our residence visas so that we could move to Portugal, the original plan. We must have been some of the first people to get their applications in after the three to four month closed window. In October of 2020, we moved to Porto, Portugal in the midst or in the face of a global pandemic, and people thought we were insane. To say we had a few doubters would be an understatement. We took a nine-month-old on an international flight. Even at the airport in Miami, a French employee of Air France didn't want to let us go to the check-in desk because we were Americans and not allowed to go to Europe. These Americans, they, they cannot go. We arrived in Portugal and felt like a weight had been lifted. Months of planning was behind us. Political tension was non-existent. People were saying bon dia and boa tarde to each other everywhere, whether they knew each other or not. They were smiling and waving at our baby. It was refreshing. Do you know what else was refreshing? The air. We didn't see very many people walking around the streets with masks on. Sure, they had masks in their hand and they would put them on as they walked into an establishment. But outside, people walked at reasonable distances maskless. It blew us away. Then reality hit. We needed to get a NIF, which is essentially a tax ID number. 
we needed to get a bank account, which you can only get if you have a NIF. So we started that journey and discovered that Portugal has its own problems with bureaucracy, organization, and structure. Before the pandemic, you could just walk into a finances office and get a NIF. The week we tried to do this was the week they changed the whole process. This caused months and months of drama, which we did blog about. We tried several banks after getting the NIF, and only one seemed to know what they were doing to get us a bank account for our particular situation. That process took over a week. Several visits to the same branch, several days of waiting in between the steps, and several hours of physically signing on an iPad, document after document. All that with an annoyed baby who wanted to play and move. So there were some bumps in the road as we moved here and tried to get used to our new life. And then the pandemic ended conveniently around the same time that the war in Ukraine started, nearly while we were in Kyiv. Security concerns again came up, but this time we felt it here as opposed to the U.S. During our time here in Portugal, we hadn't traveled back to the U.S. We had only watched the news, talked to family and some friends, and came in contact with countless of Americans like yourself who reached out to us and wanted to meet up. During that time, we got connected again to the United States in a way. But it wasn't until April of 2023, when it had been nearly two and a half years since we left the U.S. that we went back. What we found shocked us, and one thing wasn't even on our radar that we were blown away with emotionally. Portugal isn't an expensive country by any means, but the cost of living here for a foreigner to live a similar lifestyle in the U.S. isn't cheap either. It's made worse by the fact that housing costs, especially for long-term rentals, has increased by 50% since we moved here. But eating out and enjoying mid-range international cuisine is fairly similar in pricing if you're comparing it to smaller cities in the US. Like a good burger and fries could be around 10 to 15 euros or dollars in both places. Decent Mexican food is hard to find, but it'll cost around 15, which is likely the same as where you live in the US. General Indian or Thai food is probably the same too. So while inflation was definitely on the rise in the US, and that's both statistically and what's truly felt at home, it was happening here too. People from our time being back weren't as tense and hateful to each other in real life as what we had seen on social media. We didn't see a milkshake thrown at anyone, no flight attendants and passenger scuffles, really no massive social differences that we could see in person. Although we will have to clarify, we were in Tennessee, Virginia and North Carolina. So these things could be happening more where you're from. Here's what hit home that we didn't expect. We saw a very active and engaged three-year-old spending quality time with all of her cousins for the very first time. Sure, some of her cousins knew her because they met her when she was a baby, but her only real memories were in the form of pictures. She was now face to face with her relatives, sharing cuddles, laughs, and more. I'm not typically a sentimental person when it comes to stuff like that, or I didn't think I was, but I know in my heart that we owe it to our daughter for her to have more stuff like this. She needs to know her family. FaceTime has been amazing, but it doesn't replace, or at, at least at her age, it doesn't replace being face to face with her own family. This is a consideration that anyone leaving the US and their family behind will have to confront. So if you're a grandparent leaving grandbabies, if you're a parent leaving children, or if you're a son or daughter leaving a parent, this is one of the sacrifices you're going to have to make. And it's something that you should probably give some real consideration to. Because when we leave people we love, even though it's geographically, there's a price that we have to pay. The question is, are you willing to pay it? Now here's something that we reinforced on our time back in the US, and this is something that's been more than 10 years in the making, or maybe we were just born like this. The US simply doesn't feel like home for us. Home is a feeling, right? Home is where the heart is. A house is not a home. Okay, we've heard all of that stuff, but seriously, there's a peacefulness one gets in a place, and both of us realize that we lost that in the US at some point. We aren't exactly sure when it happened, but we do both feel very much wired to being abroad and the sense of adventure, exoticness, and excitement that living overseas offers. Being back felt too comfortable and familiar, and we don't like that. We even talked about how awkward it would be if one of us lost that feeling and started to long for living back in the US. Fortunately for us, we didn't experience that. We have met a lot of couples along the way that have had that happen to them. One wants to stay, the other one wants to go back, Dang, that could get awkward. So what's our contingency plan if that happens? We don't have an exact one, but we did promise each other that if the feeling does hit, we should talk about it immediately. Another thing to take into consideration when leaving your home country is the cost of moving. Moving these days costs several thousand dollars minimum, especially if you're leaving the US for Europe. You have the flights to consider, the cost of the visa process, upfront payments for accommodations, schooling for kids, buying stuff to make your house a home, and so much more. 
those are prices that you have to pay. And if we were to leave Portugal and return back to the US, we'd have to pay those prices again. It's not just a matter of picking up where we left off, and it very rarely is for people. Maybe you quit your job, you sold your house, a family member has died in the time that you were away. Your hometown or your former home city in the US kept moving along when you left. We felt that while being back, for sure. We loved seeing old friends, but a lot has changed and only our really close friends still get the people that we've become from our experience living abroad and the common denominator with that seems to be that they've lived abroad or travel abroad fairly often. At Expats Everywhere, we believe that living abroad transforms lives and we've seen that play out with our friends that live abroad. It's a beautiful thing. Transformation is so important as we strive to become better people. Our being born in the U.S. has afforded us an incredible life full of opportunities and we're very proud to be Americans, realizing it's not because of anything that we've done, but what our country did way before us. Our living abroad has shown us that the U.S. isn't perfect. There are a lot of things that we could do better and need to do better, but there's a lot of things that we feel like the U.S. is awesome at. But when it comes to leaving the U.S. and adapting to a new place, we've both done the most important thing that we can do when time gets hard living abroad. We keep our why out in front of us. Our why is our reason for doing something. Everyone's whys are different, although some people have similar whys. If you want to see our three reasons why we left the U.S. for Europe, click right here. You'll see what we left in the U.S. and gained in return moving here. Now, let's get moving. Bye.